Hi everyone, this is Rob Roy of LA Wave Options and welcome to this week's U.S. Market Update. As you see on your screen, these will be the stocks featured in this video. And as a reminder, if there's a particular stock you're interested in, you can go directly to it using the chapters feature on the video. Now, before we get to the charts, I'd be remiss if I didn't wish Chuck Norris a happy 84th birthday. A lot of you comment on, uh, boy, you kind of look like Chuck Norris, and I hear that all the time. I got a great compliment after this week's Trade Finder, uh, where you all said that uh, you look like Chuck Norris's son. So considering Chuck's 84, I kind of like that one a little bit better. Anyway, all right, so happy birthday, Chuck. All right, we'll take a look at uh, the chart of the market. Uh, as you can see, we had a bit of a down day today, a little follow through from yesterday. The big economic news that we had this week was the PPI report that came out. The CPI report had come out earlier and it was only a tenth higher, but the PPI report was a lot higher than what was expected. Now, the reason that's significant is that's the wholesale prices. So if on the wholesale side, companies are paying more, but they're not able to pass those prices on from the retail side, that compresses margins. And that kind of sent a little bit of a, uh, a, a lull into the market. And as you look deeper into it, uh, we had a couple other uh, issues in there. Retail sales were worse than expected, so the consumer is pulling back. Uh, and we also had another feature in there. The jobless claims were lower than expected, which means that wage pressures remain. So when we look at the Fed fund futures, uh, they've gone down to a 57%. They were once 80% chance of a rate hike in June. It's now down to 57%, 67 in July. So we're kind of starting to eat that rate cut thing out a little bit. Still no whispers of rate hikes yet, but that certainly affected the market. So when we look at a chart of the S&P, you can see that we did have a little bit of a down day yesterday, but today we kind of followed through to the downside. What's interesting about today's chart is the fact that we broke the 10 day moving average. We were able to hold it on the low of the day yesterday, but today we broke below it and we closed on kind of a bit of a doji, which means Monday's trade could be quite interesting. You look at a little bit of a rounded top here that we have, could that mean the end of the wave three? Uh, and as a reminder, this four here is just a projection. It doesn't mean the wave four is underway. Get those questions all the time. The software just shows this if the wave four were to start, that's where you could expect to find support and then the rally back up to the wave five. And by the way, the software comes from the hub organization, hubb.com, and they're in beta testing of the brand new edition, which is live. We're going to have live Elliott Wave. So you can go there to hub.com and register and get a free copy. There's nothing to download. It's web based. So we'll be looking at live charts here in the not too distant future. But Breaking below the 10 day moving average today, I think is significant. We'll be looking to see if there's any follow through on Monday. What does this doji mean? Some indecision right now in the markets. And I think that's kind of uh, a good explanation of uh, where things are. Not quite sure what to make of. Just one data point. Remember last week we were talking about the ISM services report came under 50, which is showing contraction. So is the economy cracking a little bit? Is inflation staying stubbornly high? Those are two things that will not be positives for the market. When we look at rates uh, via the TNX, you can see that uh, we are back up here testing this wave four. Now we had a big jump yesterday and in last night's insiders meeting, which we do for our alert subscribers only at ewotrader.com, we were talking about how uh, after that big move up, kind of thought rates might calm a bit today and they did just a little bit of an eek higher. Uh, but if we break this wave four, uh, and start to move back to the upside, who knows where rates could go? They could go significantly higher from here. So we'll be watching that at the beginning of next week uh, as well. And we take a look at the dollar, as you would expect, with uh, uh, some uh, movement to the upside in rates. There was some firming of the dollar. We had held that 104 level for quite some time right through here. We broke below it, uh, and now we found a little bit of support here at the next level lower at 103. Uh, we don't want to see the dollar start climbing too much higher. Uh, again, that's a further uh, hit to the bottom line of companies with international exposure through the exchange rates, etc. So right in this area, I still think is uh, 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 constructive for the markets moving forward, uh, but we'll have to wait and see 
uh, how things play out. We take a look at the VIX. Uh, and the VIX did back off just a little bit from this high uh, into the close, but not too much. So back up into the 15 area. And if we take a look at uh, a line drawing, and I know y'all pick on me uh, for drawing my trend lines, and I don't try to get real picky on the trend lines. I'm just looking for a general type of a viewpoint here. Uh, and so uh, you can see that there's a bit of a channel uh, to the upside here uh, in uh, uh, the VIX. And we've been talking about this for quite some time on TradeFinder. And by the way, if you haven't joined us for TradeFinder, you can register uh, following with the link that you see on your screen. We do it every Tuesday, and now we're doing it during market hours at 1 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday. So we just did the first one during market hours, and it was well-received. We had lots of people viewing us over the various uh, social media platforms. Love to have you join us. It's great to be able to talk about it. Uh, during market hours and when we have the live version uh, of profit source and we'll be watching the uh, live patterns throughout the uh, uh, broadcast it'll be great and trade finder we look for trade ideas we talk about the market and we have a live q a at the end so if you haven't registered do so and join us live next tuesday at 1 p.m eastern time all right so uh, we have been talking about this channel in the VIX quite a bit on Trade Finder and the fact that it does seem like we're going to have more volatility this year uh, as uh, we creep to the upside. Will we break out of this channel? We will. It's not an if, uh, but the question is, which direction are we going to break out? Uh, if we break to the upside, obviously more volatility likely means a downward move in the market. Or if we break back down, then perhaps it's just a little bit of a blip from that PPI report. Uh, but next week uh, we get the Fed meeting. We'll see what the Fed has to say uh, about this. And I think that commentary is going to be uh, closely watched. So that'll be something that we're keeping an eye on next week as well. Looking at the DIA, just kind of a ho-hum day to the downside as well. Uh, but we're just kind of going sideways here, which we've been doing for a couple of weeks, right around this 390 level. If we put the 10-day moving average on here, once again, broke below the 10-day moving average. So we'll want to watch that. Uh, but we kind of ran up here and just bumped our head against 390 and can't seem to move above it. Nothing too significant, nothing to uh, be concerned about yet. But I think the market is flashing some warning or caution signs, yellow flashes, uh, if you will, based on that PPI report. Is it just one outlying report or is there more behind it? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. So taking a look at a chart of the Qs, as you would expect with rates ticking to the upside, they've kind of rolled over. We have that bit of a rounding top here as well. Now what we've been watching on the Qs is this wave five. Is this five gonna relabel to a three? Reminding you that the S&P is in a wave three, but the Qs have been in a wave five. The question was asked, could the wave three on the S&P relabel to a five? And that's possible. But it's more likely, or what happens more often, is a five relabels to a three. But uh, at this point in time, it does seem like uh, a little bit of a rounded top here uh, in the queues. We look at the 10-day moving average. You can see we just tapped it on the high of the day, never really traded above the 10-day moving average throughout the day, closing below it. And are we destined to come down and test the 50-day moving average? That's what we'll be watching about for the queues uh, next week. Taking a look at the Russell. Uh, kind of bucked the trend a little bit on the Russell, a little bit of an update, just mild uh, to the upside, but we did hit that 210 level. We were wondering if we'd get up there. The range, if you've been watching for a while, has been between 190 and 210. So that's going back some time here. Uh, and you can see that uh, there we go. We touched that level close, well off of it uh, back here uh, when we touched it on uh, the 8th of March. Uh, and then back down, we look at the 10-day moving average. And even though uh, we kind of had a slightly better day on the IWM, still below the 10-day moving average, and the high of the day didn't even touch the 10-day moving average. So you can say it was worse yesterday, slightly better today to end the week. Uh, but it looks like we're back in that range between 190 and 210 that we were in uh, going back a year or so uh, on the Russell. So no real appetite here for risk, at least not today. Moving into the weekend, looking at oil, uh, the energy sector has kind of been where the action is, breaking to the upside here. Look at these zigzags, really nice looking zigzag patterns here. You know, I love zigzags. Uh, if you've watched any of the stuff that we've done, I won't do this big one, but I'll do this uh, 
uh, complex C wave zigzag here, uh, where we're right at the 38.2% level. It looks like oil does once again want to put some distance between 75. We got up to 75 and backed off and then broke above it. The 75 level has been a point of support resistance uh, going back a ways here uh, on the USO. Uh, as you can see, it acted as support back then uh, at the end of the year. Uh, and now it looks like we were headed up towards 77, 78 uh, on the USO. And coupled with everything else that's going on, the last thing the consumer needs is high gas prices. And I'm right there with you. You can go to our website, edwotrader.com, and see the cars that I have. They're all big V8 gas guzzling cars. I'm still an old motor head. Uh, so going to the gas pump with rising oil prices doesn't feel good, especially when the economy itself is uh, cooling off. But some energy sector trades have been uh, where you want to be. Look at the 10 day moving average here. This is a little bit different. We're actually a bit above the 10 day moving average on the USO. Uh, so almost a tiny bit overbought here. Uh, haven't said that too much uh, uh, today for sure. Uh, looking at Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin has uh, calmed a bit here. It's in this 68 to 72,000 range going back and forth between there. But after this vertical move, that's to be expected. It needed to do some consolidation. Notice that the 10-day moving average is down here at 68,000. If we were to break below there and close below, I know it trades 24 seven, but we do get a closing print for end of day programs like this. Uh, but Bitcoin coming down here, and uh, you can see that there was a little resistance before we broke above 68,000. So coming down to test it so far, I think is just normal course of business here uh, for Bitcoin. As you know, the halving is coming up uh, April 18th. So perhaps a little bit of a calm before the last big run uh, into the April 18th uh, date. Uh, and looking at Coinbase, we pair those two together. Uh, also bucked the trend a little bit today, which is interesting with the fact that Bitcoin kind of pulled back, but Coinbase moving higher. A lot of the old coin, alt, excuse me, a lot of the altcoins are, uh, are, are catching a bit. Solana, some of the other ones uh, that are uh, uh, keeping Coinbase busy uh, and closed above the 10 day moving average today. So, um, Nice little move back into this 220 area here. Uh, and if you're looking for a way to play this uh, big move to the upside in the crypto world, perhaps Coinbase uh, is something a bit more affordable than the $70,000 for a Bitcoin at this point in time. So we had this big vertical run up. You know what I say? Vertical moves quite often come vertically back down and a, a big move to the downside here. But we've held 220. Wouldn't have been surprised if Coinbase would have come down into this 200 level. You can see there's a little bit of consolidation there. It was also the highs from December, but at least for today, we didn't quite make it that far down. So we'll be looking for follow through to the upside there on Coinbase, but note that it is in a wave three uh, and uh, figured to move to the upside. Now, uh, some of your comments, and uh, each and every week, uh, I read your comments. Uh, I answer as many of them as I can, time provided. And just as a reminder, uh, each and every uh, month throughout 2024, we'll be giving away one of our free level three subscriptions. And that counts our impulse strategy, which is infused by AI, had a great, has a great record. We've been doing it for six months, not had a losing month yet. Uh, our volatility strategy, which looks for breakouts on consolidating triangle type patterns and our time strategy, which is looking for sideways trades. So we have all different market conditions covered. We're thousands of dollars and we give one away every month. And all you have to do to register is leave a comment underneath this video and you're automatically registered for the drawing here in March. So just put some sort of a comment down. And if you have a question, I'll do my best to get to it and answer it. So some of the things that you all were looking for, we've been looking at GLD in the past. You wanted to see SLV and I can understand that. SLV has run up. Uh, it's right up to this area here around 23. You can see that's resistance. It was resistance back in July, again in August, back here again at the end of November, early December, and we're right back there again. Uh, the LA wave button is on, so there's no five wave pattern uh, in the SLV, not really enough of a retracement to count as a zigzag either. So we just have a big impulse move going here uh, in SLV. Now, if rates continue to go to the upside, is that going to halt the bid? Uh, that we've had recently in gold and silver? Probably. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see if rates continue to follow through. Do we violate that wave four I showed you on the TNX chart? Or 
do we kind of back off a little bit on rates and give a little more ammunition here, a little more energy uh, to the metals. But you can see from the SLV, we are separated from the 10-day moving average. So we're a little overbought here. That's not what you want to see. If you're long SLV, you don't want to see it break hard to the upside at the beginning of the week. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it's just when you have a point of resistance like this and you're already overbought, if you break above it, it tends to retrace. It tends not to hold. So what we'd like to see if you're long SLV is some consolidation here. Consolidate, go for sideways for a while, build up some momentum and energy again, and then break as decisively above that 23 level. And that's when SLV can take off and run. Uh, Boeing, you ask about Boeing and holy cow. Uh, back when we were here at 200, uh, I had mentioned, can there be any more bad news come out about Boeing? And I don't want to reference the story. I'm sure you've all heard it uh, on the networks about the whistleblower. Uh, but yeah, just when you thought there's no more bad news to come out on Boeing, there was. Uh, and so we broke that 200 level that we tried so hard to hold. But this does show another thing that I talk about oftentimes uh, is that when we have these triangles, they're going to break out. Pay attention to the triangles. So we had a big descending triangle here. It didn't necessarily mean we we're going to break to the downside, but we did. Uh, and now we're down. Uh, we're at kind of the last bastion of support here on Boeing. We really need to hold this 180 level. If not, it could start to get really ugly. I know you all have picked up on the uh, Katie bar the door phrase. Uh, and yeah, that could be a Katie bar the door scenario for Boeing if we can't hold 180. We did today. Let's see if we can continue to hold it next week. Looking at the 10-day moving average, we're a touch oversold. Not too bad. It's gotten better over the past couple of trading days. Uh, but that 180 level is what you need to watch uh, if you're trading Boeing. A break below it, and I think it's a short, which is hard to say. Um, but uh, from here, perhaps we could get a tradable bounce to the upside. But it is going to have a hard time getting back above 200. It's going to bump its head pretty hard against that 200 level because it was support for so long. So perhaps a tradable bounce, but I wouldn't go uh, long Boeing uh, for any length of time unless we could break it back, break back above 200 with a follow through day. And then Tesla, same scenario. We've been talking about this. Uh, and I mentioned that if 200 couldn't hold on Tesla, we'd be down here testing that 180 level which we did, and if we couldn't hold 180, we'd be headed down to 160 pretty quickly, which is exactly where we are. 160 did hold today, uh, but if we go back in time and look, you can see that back last spring, 160 here held. This is another Katie bar the door scenario. If Tesla somehow can't hold 160, I hate to say it, but the next big level of support here on Tesla is all the way down here at 100. That's why it's a Katie bar the door candidate that we'll be watching next week. We really need Tesla to hold here at 160. If you're long Tesla, you need to see it hold that level, uh, but a break below that and it gets pretty ugly. We are a touch oversold uh, and we held 160. Same scenario here with Boeing is there could be a tradable bounce to the upside here next week, but it's going to bump its head against 180. That's not quite as much resistance as Boeing has at 200, but same type of scenario help. Same, same type of scenario here, he tried to say, uh, that perhaps uh, you know, we get a little bit of a tradable bounce, but it'll have a hard time getting it back above 180. And if it can manage to do that, 200 is uh, not too far away. So tough sledding ahead here for Tesla. Uh, TLT, y'all like TLT, and this is the 20 year, so it gives us a little move. I like TNX, I show that a lot. Now, remember on the TNX, we're showing rates. On TLT, we're showing prices. Prices and yields move in inverse proportion. So, uh, as the price is coming down here on TLT, that means yields and rates are moving to the upside. Uh, and just like with TNX, that we're at a point of resistance on the uh, uh, rate side. Here on TLT, we're at a point of support on the pricing side. So if we look at the 10-day moving average, tiny bit to the downside here, tiny bit oversold, but not too much. Uh, but also kind of look at this triangle that's building here uh, on the TLT. So gosh, what are rates gonna do? Um, something uh, may come out of that Fed meeting next week, which affects 
rates to a significant level, and that will certainly affect the market. So uh, the whole thing about more volatility coming, we could get a lot more volatility next week uh, when we start to hear some of that Fed commentary. UMG, y'all have been asking about UMG, and this is that uh, reverse split that occurred. And we've come down here and we're holding here in this 15 area. Uh, we just had a really mild winter, so there was nothing to put a bid uh, under natural gas. Uh, and we'll see if it can hold this level right here around 15. Perhaps we get some sort of a bounce here, but where's the catalyst? Uh, you're kind of looking further down the road, I think, on natural gas for a long. Perhaps another you know, market looks six to nine months ahead. So oftentimes when news comes out, it's already factored in the markets, unless it's a surprise uh, news event. Uh, so six to nine months, yeah, that's getting a little bit early into next winter. But with such a mild winter across the country this year, maybe we get a little more of a severe one uh, next year and we have uh, uh, more of a bid under natural gas. But if you've been trading UNG, uh, unless you've been trading to the downside, it's been a struggle for sure. But perhaps we can hold that 15 level. We'll see. And then last but not least, we look at the an international market each and every week here. We've been looking at uh, the INDA. Uh, and I just wanted to show you that again, because we did come down and test the 50 day moving average. We've been motoring along in that beautiful 45 degree angle, uh, move to the upside here. But at some point in time, everything corrects. Uh, and even the INDA has a little bit of a bounce off that level today. Not real convincingly closing on the low of the day. That's not really what you want. You would rather see a bar up with a close near the high of the day. Uh, that would have been a little bit stronger move. So is this just a temporary move? Remember now, based on Elliott Wave rules, if this wave five is complete, if that's done, it's still green. So it's still viewed as current by the algorithm. But if that turns purple, that means that we are going to move down to that previous four. By LA Wave rules, if you're not familiar, if a wave five extends less than 100%, once that five wave ends, you make a retracement back to the previous four. However, if the wave five extends more than 100%, you only look for a 61.8% FIB retracement from that wave five. But this is only 54%. So we'll be watching to see uh, if we break below that 50-day moving average. So I think you're kind of nervous if you're along the INDA, but no time for panic yet. Uh, but a break below that 50-day moving average pretty much thinks, uh, uh, I think means that uh, we are looking for a retracement back here to the previous four, and that should probably be factored in to your trading. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks for viewing. Take care, everybody. If you like these recordings, I'd like to invite you to join our new Trade Finder Live, where each and every week we do a live webinar where we talk about the market, but we also go a little more in depth into the technical analysis system that we utilize to forecast where the market's likely going to go, and also to identify trading opportunities. Get your free subscription today. Take care, everybody.